Hey y'all, today I want to talk about a question I get all the time. Is pursuing a career in fashion worth it? Recently I received yet another email and so I'm going to read this email to you. Hey Zoe, I'm an aspiring fashion designer and I've been watching your videos for a few months now. I've been going to college to study fashion next fall and would really appreciate your opinion on something. Is fashion really worth it? I mean, I see all these articles and posts about how the fashion industry is literal hell and about how people are mean and nasty and all that. Plus, I recently rewatched The Devil Wears Prada and it scared the shit out of me. I know that the movie is exaggerated, but still, I can't help but think that if I choose fashion, will I be crying in a dark room because of my choice in a decade? I would love to hear your views on this. Awaiting your reply, Yuvan Shankar. Look, I can't, I can't answer that for you, okay? Because that answer is different for everyone. However, I'm gonna give you a few things to think about while you're trying to make up your mind, okay? Number one, okay? Stop freaking watching movies like The Devil Wears Prada. If you're gonna watch anything to help you, watch documentaries. But you know, even documentaries are edited very carefully to prove the director and producer's main thesis, main point, their choice narrative, all right? So keep that in mind, okay? Everything and anything can be edited very carefully. You watch, even on an amateur level like me, you watch these videos that are half an hour long, I shot like 55 minutes of footage and I edited out 25 minutes so that you guys only watch what I want you to watch. And usually that works out in your favor, right? But I'm just saying, editing. Editing. Okay? Watch movies. Watch TV. TV and movies are awesome, but always keep in mind that they're fake as hell. All right? Everything, not just fashion, everything represented is fake as hell, all right? Do you think all hospital, any hospital is like the one in Grey's Anatomy? I don't think we want our real life hospitals to be run like the one in Grey's Anatomy. Same with law firms on TV. Like, are we Ally McBeal or are we how to get away with murder? And do I, would I hire either one? Probably not. Whatever. Hollywood is not about telling you the truth. Hollywood is about selling you stories, heightening reality, playing with your emotions, sweeping you off your feet, grand gestures, the most romantic, the most bitchy, the most terrible, the most wonderful, all of that, okay? That's their business, and yeah, go enjoy movies, but always remember that that is their business. Number two, yes, you will definitely cry in a dark room over your career decision, at some point in your life, and it will probably be way sooner than 10 years from now. And again, that does not matter whether you choose to be a fashion designer or, I don't know, an executive assistant, because if you're an executive assistant, your job is probably really tough with a really demanding boss, okay? It doesn't even matter, okay? Pretty much everyone cries over their job every once in a while. I have a lot of friends who are elementary, middle school, and high school teachers. They cry sometimes over their work, and they don't have the crazy dra dramatic reputation in the world. That's a life lived pursuing success in a competitive field. It will beat you up and chew you up sometimes. That's just what happens. Have I had the depth, you know, have I felt the depths of despair? Yes, I have. Have I had terrible, angry fits where I wanted to throw things? Oh, most definitely. Have I been hospitalized because my doctor said I was too stressed out and not sleeping enough? Yeah, that too. I quit drinking at some point. I also quit smoking at some point because I was doing too much of both and not enough sleeping. Yeah, I've, been, I've done all of those things. And yet, I still work in fashion because I love it. But that's me, okay? Fashion was worth it to me that's not always gonna be the case for the next person. Okay? But yeah, you're gonna cry. You're gonna cry over something because someone is gonna be a jerk to you because there are jerks everywhere. Or maybe you're working on these design projects that you can't stand. Those moments will happen. And if you find yourself truly unhappy, okay, you have to analyze like, oh, is it everything kind of like happening at once or is this a truly bad situation. It's up to you to analyze and be proactive about changing your own situation. 
Okay, but these are all, again, individual cases, not exclusive to fashion. Number three, my guess is that you see all these articles about the fashion industry being literal hell because you're not paying attention to other industries. Google articles on the tech industry. I mean, my girlfriends who work in tech, it's a complete nightmare for them. Females who are into gaming, another similar scenario, you know, um, minorities in almost any industry, like it's rough out there. And there are going to be articles of literal hell everywhere. But fashion, you know, people love talking about fashion because fashion is glamorous. And <laughs> yeah, I know there are tons of non-glamorous things about fashion, but fashion is viewed as being glamorous. So people love to pay attention to fashion and write about fashion because it's an eye catcher. People are interested in it and then they blow up the drama. Again, going back to the whole Hollywood thing. And you're like, but Zoe, they're journalists. Aren't they supposed to tell the truth? And again, back to what I was saying about documentaries. Yeah, they can be all true, but editing, editing. I have a roster of friends who are and will be forever miffed at me because I refuse to audition for Project Runway. I think at this point, we didn't know so much back then, but when it first started, but I think at this point, we understand that reality TV isn't reality. Eh? At this point, we know that it's scripted and it's edited so meticulously. If you think about it, you know, shows like Project Runway, the cameras follow the designers around 24 seven. I mean, I watched the first two seasons, and so I know that they'll shoot things in the middle of the night if they get up for a smoke at 3 a.m. So these cameras are on these designers 24-7, and yet somehow they edit it down to 45 minutes of airtime a week? Oh yeah, that's crazy edited to, again, fit the narrative that they're trying to create. So yeah, individual quotes could be real. Specific stories could be 100% true. Drama for effect, man. And that is not just a fashion thing. I really believe that you reap what you sow. And yeah, you know, there are going to be times where life is not fair and, you know, people are going to misconstrue your good intentions. But I do believe that you will get further professionally and personally, if you try to be an ethical and moral business person as often as much as possible. So, you know, be kind when you can and be smart, but don't be a doormat. Okay. I'm not saying you should just let everyone walk all over you. Okay. Moral, ethical, not a pushover. Very different. There's this reputation of the chaotic creative, the over emotive fashionista that is pushed a lot in fashion media. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I have, I'm friends with drag queens. I love a very flamboyant personality as much as the next girl. But those are not the only people that inhabit fashion. I mean, people gravitate towards those flamboyant personalities because they're very colorful. But yeah, fashion is made up of a lot of different people. But yeah, the industry is hard. I'm not even going to lie. You know, design school was tough. The first full-time fashion job I had after college, I worked an average of 70 hours a week, and it was still easier than design school. <sighs> oh my God design school. Did you watch last week's video where I showed you what I worked on in college and then that giant stack of croquis and illustrations I had to do in like eight weeks? Yeah, design school is tough. There was, there's this famous, somewhat famous article where this journalist was comparing med school to design school and trying to figure out which one was more difficult. And uh, <laughs> his conclusion was that design school was actually more difficult. And a couple of the points that he raised were, number one, in design school, there are no clear cut answers. And that just makes everything more difficult, okay? When you go to med school, it's like, oh yeah, your lungs are here, 
your spleen is supposed to be here, your pancreas is supposed to be here, and this is what it's supposed to do. And if they are in the wrong position and not doing those things, then you have to address those concerns. There's a clear cut answers there, right? In design school, you know, there are some design principles and some, some basic rules of thumb, but then, you know, when you break the rules in just the right way, you can come up with something really cool. Oh my God, there's no clear cut answers for anything. My senior year of college, I took an extra math class, trig for architects, because I wanted to have a class where x was, x was 3, x equals 3, that is the answer, there's no other answer, that is the answer, okay? You solve the problem, x equals 3. There is no, you know, I feel like I've seen this someplace before, you know, there, there is no, well, maybe if this was for a younger customer, okay, <laughs> there was none of that, but just, yeah, x equals 3, good job. Next. The other thing was the collaborative nature of studying in med school versus the pretty much solo research of design school. You know, study groups in more academic pursuits like law and medicine, you know, you guys are sharing knowledge because it's the share, same bank of knowledge. It's not true in design. You know, the whole point of design school is for you to be different, for you to learn how to develop and showcase new ideas. And so by that very nature, you're kind of on your own to do your research. And yeah, you know, there are group critiques and peer critiques, and that's all great. But still, you're doing the bulk of the work alone. Because fashion is so hard, and I've been working in this industry for so long, and I see different roles, and I see how difficult it is for all the different roles, not just for designers. When I meet someone and they say something to me like, Zoe, I like kind of want to do fashion. I kind of want to smack them around because this is not something you do if you kind of want to do it. And that's not just fashion, but it's anything that is difficult and competitive. And there is no room for people who kind of want to do it. You either really want it, really love it, are over are willing to look over some of the problems with it so you can work within it and maybe you know help change it and make beautiful things and push the craft you know you have to want it you have to love it none of this kind of business people who just kind of want to do it they don't hack it for long so, in conclusion, The Devil Wears Prada is not a documentary, and even documentaries can be faked in a very careful way. It's okay to cry sometimes because you probably will cry not just the one time and definitely before 10 years is up. Assholes can be found in any industry. Being a good person is good for the world at large and for your own personal sanity and peace of mind. Fashion is tough and competitive, and if you don't have a real love for it, you're not going to be able to hack it. No one, not Zoe, not your other teachers, not your mom, no one can tell you whether fashion is worth it. I personally found it worth it. I'm still here, aren't I? I, and I love fashion. I love designing, I love drawing, I love teaching here, school, wherever. I love it. Ask yourself, do I love fashion? Can I live without fashion being a big part of my everyday life? You will find your answer there. Good luck to you all, my beloved viewer students, and I will see you in the next video.